Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be doing the last installment of our last installment of Mitsubishi add-on cards that can be added to FX3U series PLCs and that card is FX3U uh, 480PT dash ADT that card is mainly for PT100 um, uh, probes and as usual we'll be checking out the wiring and then we're going to jump on the computer and have a look at how to set up, how to read the values, how to pretty much get you going, what data registers and things like that to read. And also, uh, we'll be uh, checking out the, the readout with hot water and probably a bit of cold water and things like that, just to get ourselves uh, get a grip of how that uh, works. So, and if you missed all the other videos we did already, we already covered four different cards. All those videos you'll be able to find in the description below. So do, do check it out and any other related videos that uh, we are uh, i have done so far and that would benefit you well i think would benefit you in a possible way you'll be able to find that out in the description below so without further ado let's get started <music> here we go ladies and gentlemen so the card is in so uh let me talk you through how it this it all is working if you want to see how this uh, process is done here, because this is a add-on card that which we is required to add any uh, analog cards to FX3 or any type of, P type of PLC. Obviously, this is as you can see FX3 is made for FX3 series. Obviously, for other series, it will be a different a different uh, add-on card. But you really need add-on card to be able to start adding these cards uh, to it. So, if you want to see how this process has been done before, I will leave the. Uh, video description below where we did uh, the installation part how this all works in there in uh, that video so do check it out in the description below so uh, let's crack on with uh, actual terminals as you can see in here again we need a 220 it does need separate 24 volt dc supply if by any chance you don't want to use any other ex additional dc supply most plcs most uh, mitsubishi plcs depending on the, the smaller ones uh, i think smaller ones maybe don't have that's probably down to about, I think, 14. That's, that one doesn't have it, but uh, anything above already starts having it. So you can see there's a 24 volt and 0 volt coming out already, so you can take it from there if you don't want to use, like I do, an external uh, power supply. So uh, as you can see in here, a 24 to and, and earth. And then you see down there, you've got a L plus, L minus, and I minus so basically one 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 so that will be the for the first uh, channel so basically the PT 100 probably is uh, three it comes with the three wires so as you can see in here uh, I have a very very basic uh, temperature probe you've probably seen them all over the place if you look at it these are quite commonly used uh, temperature probes and I, I personally think these are by far better than K and J series uh, uh, probes but I, I don't know that's my uh, preference myself. So the main, main one thing is you can see that usually I mean usually I've seen they uh, I've seen a, a bit uh, sometimes rarely different cards but usually one of them is going to be red usually that is a plus and in most cases I have not probably seen that many that would be different but the red is usually the plus as you can see down here it's got plus in it and then it's got these two other two colors uh, would be uh, pretty much it doesn't matter but uh, both of them will go for uh, L1 minus and I1 minus so it doesn't matter which way they go into it it will still read the same thing so uh, so yeah so all you need to do I've got this wire in here which is an extension wire which is going to go uh, next to my computer so we can test out uh, this uh, probe uh, better with the uh, ranges so that's pretty much all there is you uh, there's a uh, four channels in there four probes can be added and all four probes has got a different register where this is registered into so that's pretty much all there is to get this card going well but to get this card installed and wired in so next thing let's check it out the uh, computer how to uh, read them out in the PLC here we are now we are in front of the computer let's load up the GX works too 
NGX War Shooter, uh, pretty much, uh, but before we actually start that, we do need to check out, I completely forgot, we do need to check out the manual, what has been assigned to this card, and as always, go down to FX3U, 4ADDB, basically this card in here, the one you are actually working with, uh, do, uh, I will, this manual, you definitely need this manual, this is like a, a, a guide manual, what has been assigned, where and how to uh, get things uh, set up, so uh, this manual is going to be in the description below, do definitely check it out, what you need. So as always, let's check it out what we've got. So FX384 ADP PT. So first things, let's see what is uh, what can we do. As you can see, only one uh, PT ADP unit can be uh, added to FX3 series. So if you keep going, so then we're gonna go on to the. There's a keep on reading. There's a, a more general specifications of the actual card, and in here you can see. And then you can see the red temperature range is between a uh, uh, minus 50 and plus 250 or in Fahrenheit uh, That would be this kind of reader and that is look uh, Mitsubishi has done all the hard work of setting this up uh, it, Which is I like about these cards Everything's pretty much been done for you. It pretty much reads out the digital value Almost like the one is 1 to 10 I would say was that 1 to 1 to 10 yeah I would say that 1 to 10 so minus 50 would be minus 500 and plus 250 would be plus 2500 really cool and for Fahrenheit obviously that that's the same thing so uh, let's just keep going and how do we read this stuff so next thing what we need to check up on this is where the uh, layout of the actual card you can see where all the channels are quite straightforward and uh, this is uh, where you put your uh, wiring. There's a uh, uh, P and uh, the PT on the wiring to sort of give you idea how to wire it. Gives you a bit of a uh, explanations what is what. And the one we really need to check up on is and this is where we were a list of uh, special devices. Uh, so uh, first we, we I know he's, he's saying things in there, but we're gonna get to a bit more uh, breakdown for it. So if you can see down here, M8280 will determine which. Uh, read out the read is the centrigrade or fahrenheit so if you want to uh, read out fahrenheit you need to make sure that m8280 is on on uh, so uh, make sure that's been turned on we are going to be uh, reading our centrigrade so we don't have to do this so and that's obviously for for um, fxa 3g and jg series and obviously in this, as you can see each one of them has got their own a bit so um then there on as you can see our readout temperature measurement is going to be done in d8280 this is where our first channel temperature measurement will be stored so let's check that out what temperature are we reading starting up fx3 is plc so we're gonna do m8000 so we're going to be using move instruction if you haven't seen uh, uh, what is move instruction definitely check out plc training video where i already talked about move instruction so do check it out so uh, application instruction we say move uh, because it is uh, the d8280 is uh, readable only so we need to transfer that data into something so for the move instruction so we need to say d8280 we're going to move that in D0. So having done that, so that is always on. So let's uh, F4 that and online and send that into PLC. So we are PLC knows what we are doing. So there we go. So let me transfer it into PLC. There we go. Close, close. And let's go into monitoring mode. As you can see, is roughly roughly 20 21 degrees in my uh little uh, room i'm going here so that's pretty much there so let me put my hand on it so if i put my hand on it so as you can see it will start going up fairly quickly and here we go ladies and gentlemen this is how you as you can see it is a sort of displaying you actual temperature so he's telling you it's roughly, uh, even though he says uh, 260, whatever is going up down there. As you can see, it fluctuates like, like that. And when we read the now temperature like that, we don't really want that fluctuation. We want a bit more stability. And for that, uh, we can go and check out a thing called average timing. So D8284. So uh, average time is basically, we're going to set out a window 
for this guy, collect the data within that time window and only display as a, a, a display an average number of that. Rather than every single one is read, it's going to give us an average in that time window. So uh, let's do a, for that we need to say M8000. And we are making a mistake down here, so uh, we need to be in right mode. So M8000, we keep this on again all the time. And again, we need to uh, have a move instruction. And what sort of time window we're going to be making? So time window will be a K, it's a constant. So we can say K, let's say 200. Oh, not 200. 200. So that, oh, I suppose to for make a full so move k200 into the uh, 8284 was that was that correct yes that's correct so now it will take this time here uh, which is represented i think is 200 uh, uh 200 milliseconds I'm too, I do believe it's 200 milliseconds, so don't quote me on that. So I not, don't exactly know exactly what that number would translate to, but that's the time window. So, and we'll move that into D8284, and that will be uh, pretty much reading all this data and outputting in here only the average number in that time window. So let's uh, accept it uh, for it and transfer it into the uh, PLC, so where we are, so no, that's the wrong one, this one, execute, Dum. here we go, close, close, and let's go into monitor mode and see what's happening, as you can see, now we have 21, oh, it's still jumping around a little, well, it's not much, so if you still don't like that and you want you want less of a jumping out, you want the numbers to it's, it's not jumping out. You can by by increasing this, it will stabilize that. As that as long as I think that's pretty much giving you a good explanation uh, what that is. So that's that's pretty pretty good uh, uh, timing window. Yeah, that's pretty good. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you pretty much collect the data from D zero there on. You can start using that data for what whatever you want for compare to move anywhere on the screens and HMIs read out you name it we will be doing lots of this stuff in the future for the HMIs and uh, using this information to uh, work on different heating systems and uh, all sorts of different things the key is here to show uh, how to get this going first uh, so that you understand the card itself and then later on we can be using that data for all sorts of different cool projects oh right, now ladies and gentlemen this will be it for this video hope you enjoy it and uh, gives you a good understanding of how to get this card going for you and uh, any questions in like that you want to ask do ask them in the description below and I will do my best to answer them as soon as I can and of course as accurate as I can as well so other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.